In terms of value of the certification, did you find that your management team was supportive and encouraged you to pursue the Cisco Certified Architect certification? Yes, definitely, definitely. They've been um, very supportive all through CCAR, CCD, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. It is uh, interesting in engineering, there aren't that many people who, for whatever reason, pursue the certifications. And uh, so when they see a couple of us that want to do it, yes, they definitely offered a lot of support. Great, Colin. Well, my management was very, very supportive, but I would say the interesting piece was there was always a subtle pressure. Uh, when I was talking to my boss, uh, and I'm going to take CCA, uh, without him saying anything, it was saying, you'll pass it. And you say, well, I'm not sure. I haven't received <laughs> the problem statement yet. Right. Uh, so again, that was the reason I was a little nervous, because you walk into this thing with 17, 18 years of experience, there's a very clear expectation that you've done architectures for some of the largest carriers. You've done design work for some of the largest enterprise customers for Cisco. So there is an expectation and y that you, will, you should be able to pass it. So that's why, as Alvaro said, you can't prepare for it. You are preparing for it every day. So I think my management gave me tremendous support, but the pressure was there. What benefit does the certification bring to your organization and to you personally? Yes, yeah, so I think personally, uh, deep, definitely satisfaction of, of, of passing it. Uh, you know, s sitting in front of, of, of a group of your peers and being able to satisfy their questions, to go through the, all the changes, the ups and downs, it, it is you know, a great satisfaction, great personal satisfaction of knowing that you know, the work that you've been doing for the last 10, 12, 15 years, it is now validated. Th that is uh, of tremendous value you know, to me personally. I think in, in my organization, uh, because we do a slightly different type of job, um, it still gives us an edge because now we have people in the organization that are not only focusing on protocols, but that we know are also focusing on, on networks. And, and the shift from the protocol design and how do I put the bits and where, those the, where how do the packet flows is very, very different from how do you actually design a network and even, even from how do you architect a network. And what is the business value of that protocol and those bits for someone at a CIO or a CTO level? So I think it, it, it gives the organization that extra edge of understanding at all levels. Okay. Khalid, uh, what benefits does it bring to your organization and to you personally? So from an organizational point of view, Cisco services is future is tied to architectures. Uh, we are, as, as a company, we're saying it's not about just putting these boxes together. It's understanding how relevant these uh, technologies are to your overall business. So architecture is a very key for our future as a services organization. So it's, I see that as a huge benefit from organization point of view. And now, from personal point of view, you've always been seen as somebody who does architecture work for customers. Now Cisco, as a company, saying we validate that by giving you that certification by having you go through the process of this uh, whole board exam, written exam, and this whole from, point, uh, from the point of view of saying, we now understand that you have the skill set that is needed by our organization to start interfacing with the top engineering talent of a company to the CIO, CTO level of a company, and here's your number that we validate that you have the capability to do it. That's a very satisfying feeling. In terms of uh, the CCIE and CCDE certifications and all, comparing it to the Cisco Certified Architect certification, can you do a little compare and co contrast between both? Sure. I, I think um, you know, very clearly the focus here, as we're saying, is on experience, on applied knowledge. But even more important is, is the ability to be able to take business requirements, business strategy, translate that into technical applications, technical protocols, technical, et cetera, and backwards, so that we can understand what the application of specific technology is gonna do in the direction of a company. So it, it, it has a whole other set of skills that, that we're looking at, where I think uh, while the CCIE and the CCD are, are very valuable as well, their focus is a lot narrower on the sign of a network, on troubleshooting on a, of a network, where your level of understanding is, is more specific onto how the protocol operates, how the protocol is going to scale, for example. We're here now, we're combining the whole thing on what is gonna be the impact of that design into the, the business 
of, of the company that, you, that you're doing this for? What's going to be the operational impact? What's going to be the, the, the deployment, the cost, et cetera, everything else? So it is um, a lot more complex as, as you know, everyone I think should expect mm -hmm. because it's a higher level certification and it combines both sides. So it's not just a technical certification like the other ones. It's more of that combination of business and uh, technology. So I take these certification exam. I take CCIE. I consider that as a bachelor's degree that I could learn. I had to go through classes and I had to understand. CCDE, I took that as a master's thing. That again, there's a lot of experience that is needed, but there is a lot of learning that you can do as well. CCA, I took that as a PhD work somebody's doing. You identify a problem, which you might have no idea in, in your PhD thesis work. Over here, and luckily, you have to have the experience. So the educational experience you get on the academics, and then you can go do your PhD. Very similar here. I had the academic experience of CCIE and CCDE, but I had to have the real life experience. Without that, I could not have been uh, able to pass this architecture exam. So, and again, you have to come up with a complete solution that you have to sit down and write, and then present it to a board. So I would take this as three-tier approach, and two require a lot of academic, uh, DE requires academic and some experience. Architecture requires purely experience on the uh, industry side, and your strong academic background. So that's how I compare the three. What have each of you gained uh, professionally and personally by going through this uh, process, through the Cisco Certified Architect certification? It, it, it's been a great experience. You know, even though um, 90 percent, 95 percent is similar to other or other involvements that we have, uh, it, it has been a great experience because of, of what it means, right? Of the validation of going in front of the board, going in front of your peers, of of really developing. Uh, this relationship with this company that that you know is, is the focus of the test, and and being able to solve that problem. So uh, definitely, there, there's a lot of, of good experience, good learning. Um, and to me, that that's always been, been an important thing, being able to keep learning. So I see this not as the end, but you know as the start of something else, where where we can still keep keep doing more, keep learning a lot more. So the experience was validation. Uh, it, it's real validation, representing to your peers, some of the guys you work in uh, day in and out, some you don't work with at all. Uh, I always uh, enjoy uh, talking to Russ White on so many protocol work. Uh, a lot of times we look at problem from a completely di different angles and presenting it to somebody like Russ and saying, here's how you, you would uh, look at a problem, here's how I would look at a problem, during a board exam was a very, very interesting experience saying, you have to satisfy some of these top names in the industry who are sitting taking your board exam. Although you work with them in a very different environment in the customer setup, here's, here are people that they have to be completely satisfied by the angle you're taking to solve the company issue that is, that is given to you. And you're, you should be able to satisfy those guys. So it was a very satisfying experience and on the other hand, it was quite challenging to come up to the mark that that's expected out of the people sitting in the room. Is there any advice that you could give to prospective candidates for the Cisco Certified Architect certification? Just uh, come take the exam. Uh, you, you should have you know, the background, the knowledge. If, you, if you're confident in that, just come take the exam. Uh, this is one of those exams, uh, as we've been saying, that you just know. You have the experience, you have the knowledge, and you can come and, and you can do it. It's, it's great that way. And it'll be a great learning opportunity for everyone. Great. Colin? I totally agree with that. You cannot prepare for the 90% of the exam. 10%, yes, you can. For the 90%, you, you cannot prepare for three months, six months, or a year. You need experience. You need experience of working with customers, real life problems, seeing what is out there in the industry, how industry is looking into the future what industry is experiencing today, how you transition from the today's problems and keeping the future in mind. So for that, you really, really have to have depth of knowledge and experience. Without that, good luck. Well, in closing, I want to thank both of you again uh, for being here and providing your thoughts and perspective on, on this uh, awesome certification that we've uh, developed here. And uh, thank you to the audience for listening, and uh, hopefully we'll provide some good thought and perspective on the certification process for this new certification. Thank you.